Thank you. It's really an honor to be here. I'd like to share a brief prayer and message from the Hindu tradition on peace. Nashti buddhi ayuktasya, nacha yuktasya bhavana, nacha bhavayata shanti, ashantasya kutasukham. This is from the Bhagavad Gita. One who is not connected with the Supreme can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind, without which there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? One should be satisfied with whatever he achieves by his previous destiny. For discontent can never bring happiness. A person who is not self-controlled will not be happy even with possessing the three worlds. So I thought these messages were very, very powerful. The formula for attaining peace and happiness. The first item is to have a steady mind. And I think this is something I focus on a lot with my work with students who are going through so much stress in their own lives, is to help individuals understand the importance of a steady mind. Because ultimately we know that all misery and suffering exist pretty much in the mind. That's where fear, anxiety, stress, anger are existing. How much we let other people torment us or affect us really depends upon our mind. It's just a matter of seeing a situation in a specific way. How much pain will be there, how much we suffer is really up to us. So this, these verses from the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam are talking about maintaining a steady mind. The Bhagavad Gita also explains a trained mind can become one's best friend, but an untrained mind will remain one's worst enemy. So as I, I think that as we do focus on so much welfare work for so many people around the world, but if we're not helping people train their minds have stronger minds, minds that are properly nourished through meditation and prayer and worship. Because suffering is going to come and go constantly in one's life, whether we're privileged or underprivileged. But how much we let it affect us really depends upon the mind. And I feel that as spiritual leaders, religious leaders, that becomes one of our prominent goals and tasks, is to really, first of all, nourish our own minds, and then also help others nourish their minds so they're also stronger. The other item this, these verses uh, communicate is one who is not connected with the Supreme can have neither transcendental intelligence or a steady mind. So it's encouraging strongly having a connection with God. That ultimately the mind and the soul is looking for basically one thing. It's looking for that lost, loving relationship with God. And it's trying to find that relationship through so many different things in this material world. But the moment it finds that relationship with God, with the Supreme, it will actually become peaceful and happy. And that's what's really going to uh, feed the soul. And that's what really needs to be fed, is the soul. And I remember a really nice uh, story that my teacher told me on how we can see God everywhere. When he was in India, this was in the early 70s, he saw a Hindu man and a Muslim man talking. He comes from the Western tradition, actually. And they were laughing and joking, and they were having a wonderful time with each other. And afterwards, he approached the Hindu man and said, I don't understand how you and your Muslim friend are able to get along so well because there's so much fighting between the two. And the Hindu man said, a dog can recognize his master, whether he's wearing a suit, whether he's wearing shorts, or whether he's wearing nothing at all. So both the Hindu individual and the Muslim man were able to recognize God everywhere and in each other's traditions. Just like a dog can recognize its master, no matter what the master is wearing. And this is something individually we all have to try very hard to cultivate to seeing our master 
in another person's tradition. One of our teachers from about 100 years ago said that, my Lord, I'm so happy to see you being worshipped in this church or in this mosque. Seeing my Lord and Master being worshipped so nicely by the people of different traditions. So this is something that I think unless we as spiritual individuals and spiritual leaders cultivate ourselves, because it's so easy to talk about. It's very easy to talk about. I just talked about it. But can I do it? Can I genuinely do it? I think that's going to require a lot of work, at least for me on my part, to really see God in other traditions. And I think it will require work from each. That can be our lifetime's worth of work. And the more we're able to see it, the moment we talk to someone else, they'll immediately feel it, that this person is able to see God in my tradition. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here and to participate in this wonderful occasion. Namaste.